people, challenging, um, but I sensed that God was calling me to, to something else. And in fact, I did a year of volunteer work in Puerto Rico, went to St. John Fisher Seminary, and uh, God led the rest of the way in that. priest three years at St. Teresa's, four years here as spiritual director. I just got back from 10 years in the Vatican in Rome, and uh, now I'm Vicar General of the Diocese, working with the bishop very closely. I just want to talk about one priest as an example, an image for you to think about the priesthood. His name is Father Vincent Capodanno. Maybe you've heard of him. He was called the Grunt Padre. He was a chaplain in the Vietnam War, a Catholic chaplain. He died in 1967. There was a, an ambush, and the Americans were attacked, and many, many American soldiers were killed, including Father Capodanno. And his good friend, Father Julio, another chaplain, went to see the body, to identify the body, to bless the body. He noticed that Father Capodanno had been shot 27 times in the back. Now, for a Marine, that was always a bad thing, because it meant you were running away from the gunfire, from the danger. But he, then he started hearing stories about what happened. Father Capodanno was not running away. He was out greeting the men who were dying, lifting each face up, anointing the man, and saying, Jesus loves you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And going from man to man to man as he was being shot. So a great hero. And so he reminds us of three things, that priests are ordinary men called to do extraordinary things. They are called to sacrifice their life for others. And they are essential to the sacramental life of the church. So we're ordinary men. I'm an ordinary guy. I remember when I told my family I was thinking about being a priest. But I, never, I thought a priest couldn't throw a football, couldn't, didn't know things. And he you know, was great holy men, but just didn't know things about you know, normal things, family life. And priests come from families. So I remember telling my mom and dad, I thought about going to the seminary, and my dad just kept repeating our Lord's name over and over again. <laughs> Not in <laughs> <laughs> And now they're very supportive, of course, the whole family is. But we're just ordinary guys that God calls us to an extraordinary life of grace. Also, we sacrifice our life. St. Ignatius, the founder of the Jesuits, very few prep guys here, he thought he, he was a soldier. He thought that was the most exciting life in the world. He would read always about these soldiers and their lives. And then he started reading the lives of saints. And he said, the saints are much more exciting and much more courageous than any soldier I've ever read about. And he became a priest. So we are called to sacrifice and give our life. And third, essential for the sacramental life of the church. You all may have had an experience in confession that's been life-changing. Pope Francis became a priest because of a life-changing experience in the confessional. That was a priest. We know nothing about him, right? Don't know his name, don't know where he was from. But that priest changed a man's life at 17, and now he's the Pope, the head of our church. Every saint has relied on the Eucharist to become the saint he or she is, including John Paul II. Priests are behind that Eucharist. In Rome, I used to stop in the churches, and I'd see the Eucharistic adoration, and pray. I never knew who was behind that post. Was it a priest who was struggling? Was it a priest who was a saint? Was it a priest who was trying to become a saint? But somewhere behind that post is a hidden face of a priest that gives the life of Christ in the Eucharist. And that's what can be all for you if the Lord's calling you to that. So I just would encourage you to be generous to God. Like Mary's generous, or generous to yes. Be generous. The Lord already knows what His plan is for you in your life. So you don't have to do a lot of machinations or somersaults to figure it out. God knows what it is. You just have to pray about it, be generous, and say yes, and the Lord will lead you to that path and make you happy with whatever that is. But it could be he's calling you to become a priest. And it's a great life, as Father John said. It's inspiring. We touch a lot of lives and hopefully change the world to make it a better place. So I just encourage you. I know the priest here and the seminaries will pray for each one of you um, as you discern, as you think, as you prepare to say that generous yes to God, whatever that may be in your life. But thank you for your time. Good to be with you.